Hello and welcome to most likely the most surprising move update for me. Right now we're going to take a look here now at the Shadow Hitmon top which is going to have Triple Axel. A move that's fairly decent, 45 energy move that is going to do I think 60 damage which is not really that strong. But the main thing for it is it's going to buff your own attack. And you see already we have a very weird IV spread on the um, Hitmon top that's totally intentional and not because I just powered up the first one that I got. But um, with this attack rate and also just the attack stat itself, Triple Axel is really good. Like you're going to see every game that I played with this team here right now, um, there's nothing cut out. So like if there's anything that's already good against this team, um, where there are a few Pokemon for sure, you're going to see it. But also you're going to see here right now why Triple Axel is also so nice. We're going to have a Gligar against us. Gligar is double weak to ice. Triple Axel is an ice type move. And this is going to be a theme uh, basically throughout the video where we're going to destroy flying type Pokemon all over the place. And there's currently a lot of flying type Pokemon paired with steel type Pokemon. So our Hitmon Chan, uh, Hitmon, Hitmon Top, of course, is going to have a great time. The other thing here right now is you're going to encounter a Lantern, as you maybe already seen my video about the Lantern Gliscor or Gliga Core. This is a very strong Pokemon right now. Definitely, Lantern did not really get nerfed, in my opinion. At least when I played it all, all the time, it was basically super annoying to deal with. And you see already just sparking me down there, put my um, Hitmon Top already into the Deep Yellow Half, which was insane, to be fair, which you never really seen before. So, yeah, like now Spark does. So much more damage it's kind of wild but um yeah we're going to have a team here right now that's a little bit different than what you would see usually because what you're going to see here right now is we're going to have a fighting type pokemon in the lead which is going to be to a flying type pokemon we're going to have a ghost type in the back and we're going to also have an, another pokemon that has a ghost type fast move in the back and it's a normal type so this team completely dies to noctowl thankfully noctowl is kind of dead and actually, I faced Noctowl once with this team, which I kind of found funny, which is exactly here right now. So, we're going to be able to still take a look at this one real quick, because they're going to shield up the first move, which is a huge mistake. I guess I didn't read that uh, Hitmon and Top now has Triple Axel and not Stone Edge anymore. And like this, we're going to have a double buffed Triple Axel counter, and now we're going to be able to just knock them out with this one. Goodbye, Noctowl. But yeah, Noctowl is going to be a little bit tricky. Something that's also going to be a little bit tricky is going to be Altaria. By the way, basically, what you see here all over again, I'm basically getting hard countered the entire time, but usually I still come back from it, which is kind of wild. Just because the th this is basically the thing as well with the Hitmon top, as long as you have energy, this Pokemon is insanely strong because there are so many matchups where you're just going to be able to spam those triple axles, get your attack buff, get the super effective damage against the opponent. It is super wild. Like, honestly, I can highly recommend you to try this Pokemon out. I am surprised on how strong this Pokemon is, which I did not expect too much. I thought it would not be as good as it was. But for example, here again, you're going to have Naltaria against us. We're just going to go for Triple Axel. Even if they shield this move up, there's nothing they can do. They don't even shield this move up. We do a ton of damage here right now. We can use a shield. And now we are an attack buffed Hitmon top with a shield left against a Reggie Steel. And we can just go for the Triple Axel spam in order to get even higher of an attack buff here right now. It's a little bit risky, but I like the risk. And I'm just going to go ahead and go for this move. The correct play here right now is to go for the close combat, by the way. Um, as this would allow uh, the opponent otherwise like here right now if they just no shield and it would have knocked me out they would have maybe had a better chance against my Jellison but I rather want to play it a little bit funny for entertainment here and for triple axle gameplay than play it correctly in my opinion but yeah we're going to have another hard counter here we're going to always swap into our, our Medich uh, into our Licky Tank always going to meet a Medicham but while it's going to be able to always kind of realign against us we're usually going to be able to get a shield advantage which is kind of wild here because the opponent actually runs dynamic Punch and they definitely could have avoided this with this move, but they're actually running dynamic punch psychic double nuke move here, which is kind of wild. It doesn't really matter too much as they can go ahead and go for a shadow ball right now against the opponent, which they're going to actually shield up. So I'm going to decide to swap out and I can go for a triple axel, maybe, especially as the opponent is going to swap out into a Pelipper. And I will be able to just go ahead and go for that one. And I hope that I can now shield this move up, farm them down in time, and maybe just have a shield advantage against the Sableye. But sadly, they already have another charge move. So now I'm completely committing onto my boosted Hitmon top here right now. And that's definitely the right play. And I'm fairly certain that this does more damage than Triple Axel, while it's only single resisted against a Sableye. And Stab, I'm fairly certain that the Close Combat still does a little bit more damage. I'm going to look it up real quick because I'm always curious about like those new stuff. Like I don't always know it myself. 
and um, I'd rather want to learn on the side to see what actually does more damage. Close combat, uh, close combat, exactly. Close combat has a uh, 1.24 DPE against the um, yeah against the Sableye, while the Triple Axel has a one DPE. So again, the close combat, if you just go for pure damage, is going to be more. Um, doing more damage even if it's single resisted against Pokemon, but of course, Triple Axel going to provide you with the attack buff, which is so, so nice to see. Here right now, we're going to have a horrible matchup. We're going to have the Registry against us, but we can go ahead and go into our Hitmon top. Should have most likely thrown here already the Triple Axel in order to avoid to use another shield here, but I'm fairly certain that the extra energy that I just gained going to come in clutch now anyway. Or at least I thought, and I was wrong with this. We're going to sadly see the Azumarill in the back, and like this, there is not a lot that I can do really about it. I tried to catch a move here, it did not work out, and we got completely walled in this game right now. There is nothing I can do about it, and um, yeah, this is just something that's going to happen as well. If the opponent has like two, three answers against the uh, Hitmon top, like it's not going to do anything, of course. We have a ghost type as well as a fairy water type there. Of course, Azumarill completely walling the Hitmon top is kind of annoying, but we can move on to the next game right now. We're going to have a Cherizard in the lead, horrible lead again. Again, we basically get completely hard walled the entire game, uh, or like all the games so far right now, which is absolutely wild. Like the algorithm definitely was not on our side, but we are still going to be able to come back from most games. Here we're going to now see the matchup against the Alone Sand Slash. They are running the Shadow Clauser fast move, which might actually change for the upcoming season. Maybe people start running Powder Snow again on this Pokemon, because I see an increase of um, Licky Tank coming up, I see an increase of Gligar coming up, where you might be able to just farm them all the way down. And um, yeah, stuff like this might actually help the Sand Slash with the other fast move with Powder Snow to be a little bit more viable. We can go ahead and go for a Body Slam against the opponent's um, Chazard here, and I'm kind of making a misplay in this case, to be fair. I will be able to go ahead and go for a Surf soon, but I can underestimate the energy gain from my opponent here, as they're gonna go ahead and go for another Charge move, that's fine, it's going to be a Dragon Claw. I have now two Surfs, two surfs stored, as I will be able to get a Shield from the opponent here. But I could go straight for the Surf, but I didn't do it, because I thought I could go for another Fast move first, and like this, they're going to be able to knock me out. I will be able to get some energy though, one Fast move with my Hitmon top, and they're going to have a Steelix in the back, they're double weak to fighting, and I will be able to catch the Breaking Swipe onto our Licky Tongue, which is amazing for us, as I can now go ahead and go for the Triple Excel buff. This was actually the first battle that I had with this team, which is kind of funny. And you see here already, the Steelix has no chance at all, and the opponent is going to forfeit this game as there was nothing they could have done. We will see the Bastion in the lead here right now, and this is something that I will expect to see more often in the upcoming season as well. We're going to see here the um, Reaping Bell of the Seisop, so they're definitely going to have the Victory Bell in the back, otherwise he would not run Reaping Bell at all. Uh, Reaping, Reaping Bell has actually a higher attack set than the Victory Bell, which is kind of interesting, so that's why also a lot of people, are like not a lot of people, but some people are using this, but has a worse moveset, moveset in general. But what I expect to see is more Grasshold teams, because Grasshold does make a a lot of sense right now in the current meta. So I would expect that you're going to see more Victory Bell in general. And you see me here swapping out and also shielding this move up because I have a Body Slam stored on my other Pokemon. I will be able to go to the Triple Axel right now. And I'm fairly certain that I'm going to be able to get the attack buff here to also put the opponent into a range to get them into Body Slam range right now. We had to play around a little bit because actually the backline is kind of hard countering our entire team here right now. But we're going to be able to now farm them down and we're going to have a very positive matchup against the Bastion. But uh, going on, onward towards, again, the Victory Bell. Victory Bell going to be so much better this season. The um, Lantern is going to be more common again, or like in general, going to be common still. We're going to have the Gligar, which is not going to be able to win against the Victory Bell, especially the Shadow variant in like the two-shield scenario. We're going to have Pelipper, which is basically a similar scenario. We have Nocturne gone. We have Carbink now in the meta, which is going to lose to the Victory Bell. We're going to have um, Horrible Lead, by the way, again here. Also against a regional winner, which is kind of funny. But um, we're going to have basically an entire meta that's weak to Victory Bell. And yeah, so I expect that we're going to see a lot of um, Shadow Venusaur and a lot of Victory Bell and a lot of Traven coming up over the next few days. Especially as, um, yeah, the Noctowl is kind of nerfed, so a lot of people don't really want to run it. Here we got a completely hard wall from the get-go. Lead was a hard wall. 
that here the next Pokemon is going to be a hard wall sadly against us. So it's not really looking too good for us right now. Scorching Sand on Digger Speed going to do some decent damage. I can go ahead and go into my Hitmon top. I hope that I can farm down in time, but I still get to a move. And it is even a Hyper Beam. So yeah, like this game, there is literally nothing I can do about it. At least I thought, but let's take a look at this a little bit, because you're going to see here the Psychic coming through from the opponent, as I can go for a Surf here to try to knock them out, as I know that they had basically 100 energy, I think, on this Pokemon, and we will see right now that the opponent going to swap into their final Pokemon, which is going to be the Crestalia. But I honestly misplay this quite a bit, I feel like. I do a lot of times just throw it a little bit too late. I should throw a little bit earlier with like Shadow Ball. I think I wasted some energy in this matchup. But basically, Jellicent was a hard counter to the opponent's line, which is kind of funny. But just one Jellicent, especially if the opponent's Cressalia has a shield advantage, is going to be not enough really to knock them out. Here, I wasted some energy, sadly, because of um, the way I built up my energy, which is not really ideal. Should have thrown it a little bit earlier. At the end of the day, I don't think it mattered at all. I should have, like, maybe if I baited the first one here right now and had the extra energy, maybe then, but otherwise, there was not a lot that I can do about it. I mean, hard counter lead, hard counter say stop, and then it was just tough to come back from that. Great lead for the first time for us here, really. But we're going to now see the Pelipper swapping in. And you see me doing something weird here. I could have also went into my Jellison, which would have been able to resist the Weather Ball, which might have been a little bit of a better play. Also, could have been the better play in general. But the um, Jellicent is going to be very decent still against the Galarian Stunfisk, as well as our um, Licky Tongue is not so good against the Galarian Stunfisk. So that's why I went ahead and went to sack my um, Licky Tongue here, as well as I'm going to be able to get a shield advantage. Plus, I'm going to get energy advantage onto my good friend the Jellicent. So this is going to look fairly decent for us right now. We can see now the opponent swapping into their final Pokemon, and it's going to be the Trevenant. And this Pokemon will not appreciate triple axel as we will be able to get the attack buff here they shield up the first move already and we can use one shield here right now and triple axel hit on top is going to be able to destroy a ghost type here right now with the trevenant and also going to completely destroy the galarian stunfisk forcing the opponent to forfeit this game and we can move on to the next game Speaking of very toxic teams, we're going to have here the Diggers be in the lead, which now has Scorching Sands, which is most likely actually way better for this kind of team idea that the opponent has here right now. And we're also going to have in the back, of course, now the Charm Ninetales. I was actually fairly certain that I'm going to be able to win this match up here right now with my Jellicent going for two stars because I thought I get, got enough damage already off with the counter in the beginning. But it turns out that the opponent completely going to survive this one with a 1 HP here right now, which is so bad for us. Literally changes everything as they're going to have their Gardawa in the back. And like this, I kind of have to play around here. And I don't know if I can play around because the opponent going to go for Scorching Sense with Diggersby, which honestly... I don't know if it's the best move. I already played Degaspi and there might be a video coming towards it as well very soon on my channel. So definitely subscribe if you haven't already and you want to see some Degaspi content. But um, Scorching Sand is not really doing that much damage, luckily, to us. So we're going to be able to shield up now this move, which is going to be the Fire Punch, which is kind of sad. But I will be able to swap out now into my Hitmon top, go for the Triple Axel, going to get the Knockout against the opponent, and also get the Attack buff. But also, I have two Body Slam stored, and the opponent doesn't generate energy as fast. So Shadow Guard of War right now is going to go down just from the Body Slam alone. And honestly, Shadow Guard of War is one of the Pokemon that I kind of want to try out as well. Maybe I'm going to try out such a very tryhard team as well, but we will find out shortly, I guess. As we're going to now move on into the next and final game here, we're going to encounter the Medicham, which is going to be a little bit tricky here to deal with for us. Of course, again, we're going to get hard -walled, but they're going to even hard us further with the Rachi Steel swapping in against us. Like, literally, I think from, like, the... 11 games that I played in total with this team, I got like hard world 9 times out of it. It is wild, but we still can maybe come back from this one. It's going to be a little bit of a tough one, but as you're going to see here right now, I'm going to make an interesting play. I'm going to go for the body slam right now, but I know that the opponent is going to try to lock on me down, so I'm going to avoid this by swapping out into my Hitmon top. I'm not using a shield here, expecting the opponent um, to just stay in here and go for the Focus Blast. And like this, I actually get up to a Triple Axel, which is going to be amazing for me, because like this, I'm going to force a shield against the opponent's Medichat. 
spam. And this is actually not a shield. They're letting this move go through. And like this, I'm going to be so good in this spot here right now as I can just go ahead and go into the Jellison, farm them all the way down, and we see the Lantern in the back. And don't tell me Lantern is like nerfed or anything like this, because you see already the spark damage adding up here right now. This was never so crazy ever before. Like we literally after just a few sparks already in like close to red health range here, they could have just went for surf the entire time and would have been able to knock me out after a while. They didn't even have to go for the um, yeah, like, look, look at the damage of Spark, it is so insane. But I will be able to reach another Shadow Ball, luckily they have so much energy, but I can't just snipe them with the Body Slam here to knock them out, and that's going to be it for today's video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. See you then, bye bye.